Welcome back to Downstairs and Dragons. We are back with our D&D Marathon. We are in the Chalet Brent Fax, and our party has decided to rest inside for the night and wait for the Shadow Mastiff to despawn. So we have Josh playing Dork, we have Dusty playing Clay, and Jacob playing Pantheo. Don't mind us while we eat dinner through this episode. So Clay learned how to cook Chipotle. <laughs> You guys um, kind of go through your rations. Um, you have a nice dry area to cook and eat. Uh, you have the dining room. You have the living room to lay all your bed items out in and rest safely for the night. Um, you have Lumiere with you, the fire Donati, mm. who has his hood up over his horns. Also, Clay's going to go up to where um, Mr. Cr- or, uh, Miss Little Crinklebody is. What? Mm-hmm. There it goes. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna go in the room. Okay. See you later. Um. So you go up to the room. Yep. To the nursery. Mm-hmm. And are you you're leaving Admiral down below? Mm-hmm. You with me. Okay. So you guys see your buddy go upstairs. Mm-hmm. So, with the door because it's closed. Because she threw the rug and everything. Um, um, there is no door. Well, there is no door. It's totally routed out. So you're just standing in the stairwell. Oh, if I'm standing in the stairwell? The room actually looks less messy than it did when you left it. I'm actually going to pull from my pouch in my pocket a copper piece. And I'm going to toss it back up into the room. And I'm going to go down the stairs. So she can have a copper coin back. Okay. Because I believe Pantheo took it. Well, yes, but she didn't react at that point. She reacted when the ball was touched. Do you oh. have a copy? No. Yes, I genuinely do. Because I spent a gold and I was silver and I, I ended up converting. I've got, I think mm-hmm. I got a handful of copper, a few silver. I'm, I'm just fucking You're good. So then what you guys do, so honestly, it was so eerily calm and chill in that room, especially compared to how you saw it. So, um... I'm gonna say, and may you rest and good night. Oh, you say good night to Sylvia. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you leave that room and you come back downstairs. Lumiere is hiding his face from anyone who could be coming down the stairs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have, you know, Admiral the Mastiff is laying out um, on a rug, trying to be comfy, and just <laughs> every time he hears the Shadow Mastiff go by, he stops and listens, so he's a little unnerved by it. I rub his tummy and scratch his ears. Mm, everyone like that. Um, you guys sleep for the night. I'm very well rested for how creepy this place is. And in the morning, the sun comes up. And it's almost like you think you can see the sun over the fog through the bay window, but... Then it disappears into a foggy gray sky again. You lose sight and sound of the Shadow Mastiff outside, and you guys wake up nice and slow and munch some things for breakfast, have some water. You, The ravens haven't really come down to talk to you. They've been busy on their own. So you've just been on your own down here. Just packing my stuff up. Mm-hmm. And would, uh, walk outside. No, I only know about this. Like you know, the the, the earth-like things. Uh, what is the shadow fell necessarily? Because I don't think Clay would know. Lumiere, you guys are all gonna roll for this. Because the um, the prime material plane, where all the elements come together. <coughs> It's like a three-sided coin, or like three mirror planes all facing each other. Mm-hmm. In one mirror, you have our world. In the other mirror, you have an abundance of magic and life, flora and fauna, weather, uh, time, and just... It's a chaotic but beautiful place. In the third mirror is the shadow fell. You have less color, less life, less time. Hmm. It is the emptiness version of our world. 
if you would say that here in the prime material we have a cup half full in the Feywild it's overflowing and in the Shadowfell it is empty. Mm. That's sad. And you guys are welcome to have different interpretations of that for your own characters if you guys want to chime in. Well, thank you, Lumiere. Cool. Is it still okay if I call you Lulu? Yes, it is, Clay. When have you ever called him that? When I get everybody's names messed up, I call them Lulu. Interesting. Hmm. I'm going to bed. It's been a long day. Good morning. I also... I woke up. <laughs> I woke that up. That was a great night of sleep. I actually uh, called them Lulu in my notes, too. Just so that way I don't have to sit there the whole time writing out Lumiere. Mm. So, as I'm taking notes, and I know right there it says that, but... Mm-hmm. You even draw a little candle instead of his name. Well, so, so uh, uh, shall we, guys? I mean, like, I'm, I, I don't know what else there is to prep. I mean, we could talk to the, the Scarlet Sash to kind of maybe get a little bit more lowdown about what we might find over there, but... I think they already told us all they have to. It's, we're going to be inside of some sort of mausoleum type thing. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, because they traverse it often, it is not that worrisome. Uh, and at this point, Lumiere is doing bark skin, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, mage armor, but it's going to be... Well, no, j- just bark skin. It's a level two. Mm-hmm. And um, it definitely looks more like obsidian magma on his skin than bark, yeah. but... Which is a spell two slot. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So. Okay, two of them, right? yeah. Yeah, two. Yeah. Um, you don't have to speak with animals to know that Admiral doesn't want to go with you. Mm. Um. He just wants to stay in the prime material. He'll wait for you here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's fine. Chill. Um. Can we? But he mm. does ask to go outside to go potty. Go for it. Oh. You're your own man. You guys let him out the door. He I goes just, out, sniffs around. I just want to be back. Finds a spot, squats, time. comes back in. Cool. See hmm? What? I said I want to be back inside before nighttime. Right. Okay. Now, time will be different in the Shadowfell. Mm-hmm. It will be hard for us to tell. Yeah, I wasn't sure how. So, like, can you just make sure you take care of Admiral while we're in there? Am I not coming with you? Huh? What? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was a Scarlet. Sorry. No, it's Lumiere. I know all their no. voices are smart. Um, Lumiere's not going with us? No, he's going to come with us. Okay. We need him. Battle of Crump. I go try to find a, one of the Scarlet Sashes. Um, to... If anything, while you guys are outside letting him go potty, they're sitting as crows. That's my bird. For bedtime, that's why. Can we, um, hey... Would you guys be willing to watch Admiral while we're in the Shadowfell? A few of them are just random crows, but you can tell the really big raven looks at you and kind of goes, Gah! Sick, thank you. All right, that's all my uh, prep I need to do. That reminds me of the crows from Dumbo. Mm. Let's go. You guys head down to the cemetery with its four graves. And you were told that Sylvine's, Sylphine's is the one to dig up. It is the one on the far bottom. So you guys can grab the shovel from the foyer and bring it out with you and start digging. Hello everybody, Paul the Necromancer here, and today we're doing an unboxing. <clears throat> so um, just to kind of rank how long it takes, does anyone want to roll athletics? Yeah. Well. Actually, um. No. Lumiere can uh, prepare Mold Earth. Oh. Yeah, Mold Earth is a third level spell, I'm pretty sure. I'll have to check. Oh, sorry. I thought it was cantrip. I would have I would have had it by now. Mold Earth, is it a cantrip? Also, you can't prepare cantrip. I do know that there was like a pendant or something. He can, he can do it. I changed out his cantrips depending on the day. Mm. Oh, it is a cantrip. What? Why do we not have this? Is this not for druids? It is for druids. I would have absolutely had mold earth. I don't know why I do. Next level. Your list cost a level right now. What do I even have? You can learn it from him. Mm. Yeah, cool. Because I think we learned another camp. Um, oh, you're right, we do. 
So he uh, molders and reveals the incredibly molded, decrepit wood coffin um, of Sylphine, who perished at the age of six. So it is very little. Um, underneath the coffin, black smoke is seeping out of the earth and filling the tomb. Now, he looks at you and goes, are we digging up any of the other coffins? Why would we? I don't know. We just need the one to take us to the Shadowfell. You're right. We don't really want to make anyone mad. So he lifts the child-sized coffin out of its, out of its grave, places it gently next to the grave. And between his legs, um, it is just black smoke in here. And it's a tight fit. But he looks up at one of you and goes, who's going to lay down first? I will. He jumps out of your way. I don't mind the night. <laughs> Just like, our <laughs> T-Pose falls backwards, breaks his head. Nye jumps in the hole and then lays down. Okay. You lay down, cross your arms over your chest as if you were a body to be buried. Close your eyes and open them. To find yourself in a black and white world. The sky is a swirl of gray fog, and you didn't realize fog could be any grayer, but with all the blues and hues taken out of it, you realize how little color there is here. Mm. Even the dirt is gray. You climb out of the grave, and you are in a big, wide graveyard that probably has about a hundred graves. Very nowhere. And behind you is a dark gray stone mausoleum with an iron gate. Oops, I turned off the wrong thing. Um, the next person to go in um, lays down, crosses her arms, and appears. I can have Lumiere go. Lumiere comes through. Oh, and then down. which one of you is next? I'm six feet from the edge of the shadow of hell. Me. All right, good job. So, um, next is Doric, and finally Clay. Do you cross into the shadows? Clay doesn't go through and just puts the coffin back and buries the dirt. Cool. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. The three of you, because Clay is not there. Oh, I'm messing around. I know, I know. <laughs> As Way to fucking Uno reverse me. As Clay goes to sit up in the grave and look around, you guys hear growling from behind you. Um, stepping out from one of the graves is a great big black shadow master. What's his name again? Rorn. Hi, Rorn. Roll animal handling. I know it's not an animal, but... Well, oh, that's not that great. <laughs> It's not that great animal handling. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that would have only been like 11. Uh, let me roll against it. We already know you're going to pass me. He growls, stomping towards you, and then howls into the sky. And manifesting behind other tombstones are other shadow mastiffs. You don't know if they're like copies, mere images? Or if they are legitimate shadow masters from the shadow fell. More chill. But you guys are surrounded. More chill. They're growling and and circling and coming in. If you guys don't roll initiative, they will get the first attack. Are we ready? Yeah, I pull out my I pull out my whip. All right. Let's roll initiative. You gotta take a break, little toy boy. And. Oh, those are for you. And I gotta get my Shadow Master stats back up. Um, Oof, this is not going great. Maybe, maybe I should start doing this. <coughs> that makes sense if you just came out of the hole, too. I mean, they were kind of already lined up. Yeah. Um, well, they kind of like materialize next to you. Um, there are four of them, and I got. Jesus. Um, I got two sixes, a nine, and a ten. But you both like sucked our luck away. Yeah. I got a twelve. 
I also got 12. Uh, I have a plus 4 deck. Plus 4? Where's my red 2 go? So, Rintheo, oh, Dora, what you get from? Clay had 6. Lumiere had 11. Okay, so um, I know I don't have a grid down. You guys are out. So, Clay tied with two of the masters. Oh, Clay, go ahead and hold it. I might just do all the Mastiffs in one chunk. Um, well, I guess it could be two before play, two after play. Thank you. Um, I'm looking for the map. Camera. Oh, gosh. Okay. That's better. Okay, the mausoleum is to the north. Um, Pantheo, you're about to be surrounded by four shadow masters. What do you do? Oh, yeah. Um. Ah, my drink. Oh, it landed normal. Interesting. That's cool. Wow, that's that could have been a huge mess. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Fortune is with us still. Maybe. Yeah. Nat twenty. Nat twenty. That's oh, what, no, sorry, no, that's what. Okay. That's yep. what that was. That's exactly um, what that was. I am a little spooked by all these shadow boys. Uh, I'm gonna just move within 10 feet of the guy who's uh, directly in front of me to your left, right? Yeah, uh, 10 feet away though, and I'm just gonna fucking hit him with the wheel. Awesome, thank you. A crack owl. All right, that's pretty fucking good. That's a 23. Um, 23 definitely hits. I genuinely thought you were going to be like, just misses. Mm -hmm. no. Seven points of damage. Seven points of damage. Uh, yes. The matter is four. Uh, One, two, three are at, two are acid and um, the other five are piercing. You said seven? Yeah. Or slashing. I think with the slashing. Okay. Um, I'm double checking what they're... Uh, okay. You were good. Um... um I got nothing for a bonus action. Oh, well, I guess I could. I would have to close the gap, though. Oh, true. Um, because of the nature of your whip, you notice it is able to uh, find purchase in the flesh of this mastiff. Sick. Um, but you notice that it like almost phased through. Mm. So where are you going? Uh, I'm going to move five feet forward and then take a claw attack. Oh, perfect. Offhand claw attack. Great, ready. That not good. No, that's not gonna hit. That's a nine. Okay. But you still did good. You're right in his face, so it has stopped circling and it's just facing you. Anything else? Uh, no. Use magic! My fists are magic. Amazing. Okay. Dork, it's your turn. Not. Uh, there, if, if that's a plus one weapon, that's magical. Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'm going to Ooh. have to put them. Oh, I like that. Okay, I'll I'll make a big charisma saving throws, because, or not all of them. Um, one, two, and. This is five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Yeah. What's. Is that number four? Mm hmm. Okay, right, one, two, and four. I have to make charisma saving throws for them. Um, hold on, I'm doing math. D&D math, do be hitting different. It hits different. I got a 14. Passes. And a nat 20. And a 6. The nat 20. Number 4 is banged. Anything else, Doric? Oh. All right, thank you very much. The mirror. Flame blade. Yeah. And a single on-hand attack to the first one. Let's try and do um, Adding six. Adding six to it, right? Five to hit. 
Five, ten. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have four. No. The what character four? sheet, if you look at the red yes. leaves, it says to hit melee. Uh, I'm getting mine and, or I'm getting Lumiere's and Clay's stuff kind of messed up. But either way, 22 to hit. Uh-huh. 46. Mm-hmm. Um, that is not one. Well, okay. Um, okay, 11, 13. 17 points. Mm. For a first flat. Well, I suppose you probably want me to roll two, both of the d20s. No, you can't, because Flame Blade is a bonus action. Oh, yes, it's not so, until next turn, right? Okay, very good okay. job. Clay, it is your turn. All right, well, I'm, you know, going to do what everybody else is doing. I'm going to run up to the one that's in front of me. And I'm going to roll to try to flack it. I'm going to try you again, see what you give me. Sorry, that's off the camera a little bit. I'm going to move everything. That's only a 10 for hitting. Okay. Um, anything else? Almost 10 hits. No. Alright, Clay. Is that it? Oh, I was supposed to have two monsters go in front of you and two after. What happened? Did I rearrange this? That's fine. You said you're going to have them all go at once. Yeah, okay, anyway. Anything else with your turn? No, that's about it. Okay, the Shadow Mastiffs, for each one of you respectively. Um... You're going to be bit. So, number one is going to try to bite Lumiere with a seven. Mm. Oh my god. Number two is going to come forward and try to bite you, Doric, with an eight. Uh, Pantheo, this one tries to bite you with a seven. Finally, one play. Seventeen to hit. For Clay? Mm -hmm. Miss. God damn it! <laughs> you thought I got no bite. <laughs> they stay dude. Top of the round with Pantheo. Is that the one that you rolled with a D4? Yes. Mm -hmm. What was it at before? Eighteen. So um, it still would have not hit me. So on its turn, it would have taken two things. It would have taken the extra D4 poison, which I'll do here. Uh, one point of damage poison. It also would have taken Hail of Spores, which is a uh, con save for an additional D4. None. Uh, it takes an additional three uh, poison damage. So how much total? Uh, four. Thank you. All right. Now for my turn, I'm going to... Um, I think spin around it so I'm on the outside of it. So just do a little 180 and then um, I think I'm just gonna take actually two claws attacks. I'm gonna drop the whip and then just go double in on claw. Mm -hmm. First one, damn, oh, so close. Uh, 25 to hit for the first one. Mm -hmm. And then I'm at 20 on the second. Fucking right. However, I don't have my symbiotic entity, so I don't get the extra D6 damage. It's okay. crazy, though. He literally has a 19 and a 20. Mm -hmm. So, if he was a fighter, it was an improved crit. These are both my TM decks. Good. I'm, I'm not playing in his campaign. No, I'm not. All right, uh, so... I'm joking. It's a D4 each. Um... So that... Or then two for my second one. So the first hit is, um... Seven points of slashing damage. And the second one is less. <laughs> Six points of slashing damage on the crit. Well, wait. Is it two dice or is it one oh, dice? Oh, I actually wouldn't add the proficiency bonus on the second one. So I only got two damage on the crit. <laughs> wait, so you, only, you rolled one? Hmm? You rolled a one? Because I, I... Yeah, I rolled a one. Oh. Uh, are we doing double damage or double dice? Double, double, I, I, double, I, double uh, damage. Sorry, it's still a two no matter what. Yeah. I'm used to double dice. That's my bad. Okay. It's I will, okay. It's I will okay. fix myself. No, it's not a big deal. Um, Jacob, yeah, we appreciate you. So, um, the weird thing is you are clawing at this dog, and where a normal predator would be like, hey, I'm getting hurt, I need to run away, this thing does not care. Um, it does not care that it's being clawed at. It is still barking and growling and spitting at you, lunging at you. 
Anything else? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he used action, bonus action, other than movement to take a attack of Bob. I think he's just gonna uh, end his turn. Perfect. Yeah, just, Thank just you so much, Panthea. That was fantastic. Uh, Doric, it is your turn. I'm gonna cast um, spiritual weapon. Mm. And I'm gonna have it appear opposite of mine, so behind it. And it's going to make an attack against it. Would that be flank or no? Because it's not really a creature. I think it counts. Oh gosh, I'm getting PTSD from the wave pool. Oh my god, it does sound like the wave pool rave. That's going to be a 25 Or even the ballistic yes, dance. Yeah, a little bit. It sounds like ballistic dance, too. Mm-hmm. Nice catch. Um, that is going to be 10 points of force damage. Amazing. And then I'm going to cast uh, Sacred Flame, and it needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Five. Fails. So and you fail. Takes two points of radiant damage. Not bad. That's good. And then I'm gonna move diagonal a little bit towards uh, Lumiere, but not not exiting yes. range. Uh-huh. And then I'm gonna make a daunting roar. Okay. So those two. Yes. Need to make a... Oh wait, I can't. That was a bonus action. No mind. Okay. Thank you, Doric. That was fantastic. You did good. Lumiere's turn. You ready to do two hits? You want to roll both your d20s? If the second one isn't needed on this one, we'll just see. Well, one of them's not gonna hit anyway, but uh, one of them's a 23 hit. The other one was only a seven. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Grab all my D4s. Um. Yes. <laughs> I literally got two, three, four, five D4s. No, it's for the mirror. Wait, you said D4s. I said I'm going to grab the four. Oh. I grabbed the four D6s. How much total? Uh, so it's going to be... Nine, nine, nine. So... 17 points. <clears throat> 17 points for the one hit. Wonder. That is enough. Um, so he is able to slash through this thing and it disappears in a puff of just... shadow smoke. Number one is gone. Um, he is going to move over to this one to flank with you, Clay. Okay. But he is out of things to do. It is your turn. Alright. You get advantage now. Fucking right. Okay. Please. Wow, that is oh, shit. Those are both yeah. Well, oh, that's eleven. That's I, thought that 11. Was a, I thought that was a one. No. Um, however, uh, seventeen hit. Mm-hmm. So I get to roll on my base. <clears throat> um. Yeah, there. I see it now. Okay. Seven. Fifteen points of smack smack damage. Fifteen points on number four. Yep. Fantastic. Um, and for I'll, I will use my bonus action and do an unarmed strike instead of doing like flurry of blows or anything. Okay. Because that's what monks get to do. Do I get to roll advantage on that as well? Mm-hmm. Just flanking. Yep. Okay. Um. Wow, thank goodness for the advantage. Um, so that's going to be a 24 to hit. Hits. <clears throat> oh goodness. Back here. Oh my god. Uh, I got the drossies. Um, that. I didn't accidentally. Hmm? Okay. I, I was kind of zoned out. Okay, I was worried I bumped it into a different number, but I don't think I did. Because I saw you looking at it, and I thought you made nope. a face like... Oh, all right. I was listening to the music, and I was lost in thought. Sounds good. 
Because you would add your bonus to the damage, just not the proficiency, correct? No. Uh, neither. On your think, offhand. I think. Oh, offhand. No, yes. Well, do monks get proficiency? But monks off? might. Sorry. I don't know actually how their offhands work. I just know that I don't get it from my offhand. Yeah, and Lumiere doesn't either. Because it might, because it's... Oh, oh, yeah. it I know well, if you take dual wielding, you do. But either way, um, I will just go ahead and do the 10, 13 points of punchy damage. That is enough. <laughs> oof, oof. Um, when you strike this creature, mm-hmm. while it is a fiend and barely has any life, you guys see, instead of it disappearing, it coalesces into like a orb and gets sucked into, pan- into uh, Clay's palm. And you gain, um, I think it's a D4 temporary hit points. You get one temporary hit point. Lumiere sees this happen too, and he goes, we don't have time for this. Oh, Keep going. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. And that's like um, a rally. Like he's not yeah, mad at you. Yeah. No. Uh, I will run up to the one that can't deal with. Okay. Because I still have all of my movement. Cool. <clears throat> that's it. Fantastic. And there you go. Yeah. It is the monster's oh, turn. Well, so out of curiosity, so when you summon a spiritual weapon the way that Doric did, is that considered flanking now? And I personally believe it is. Okay. It makes, it, it there would, would make be sense. some just, cases where it's not, but uh-huh. it's because the monster is like having to deal with things on both sides of it and being distracted. Mm-hmm. That's my thought process. Okay. All right. But I'm not mad at someone if they say no. Yeah, and I I kind of figured it was one of those things where it could be like, oh, hey, this person will say it this way, this person will say it this way. Or maybe like a certain monster wouldn't be affected, but in this case, it's fine. As a fellow DM, would you say that that's going to make it? Yeah. Okay, 100%. All right. So. Number three is going to try to bite Pantheo, and number two is going to try to bite Doric. I have a 16 to hit Pantheo and a 12 to hit Doric. Okay. Uh, a bite is... <coughs> Please make a constitution save, Pantheo. Uh, con save... Uh-huh. 13. Oh, you pass. Nice. But you take six points of piercing damage. Ow! And not tripped as it tries to bite your leg and pull you. Hey, fuck you. Um, now it's your boy turn, Pantheo. Got my boy all wrong. Fucking boy all wrong. dude, fucking cut it out! I'm gonna uh, pick up my whip. That's a free action. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just fucking get off! Oh, fucking get off! Why is this okay, roll to hit. Uh, that is a 25 to hit. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. shit. You got 19? No, eight, 18 plus 7. Oh, okay. That's, ooh, that's good. That's 11 points of damage. No, 12. I forgot about the plus How one. How do you want to do Oh, yay. Uh, same thing as the red cap. Um, whip hits him. It cuts open a wound, except... Instead of like fully engulfing him, just um, mushrooms fucking start pouring out of the wound, just like. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's so fast though; they can't really take hold because the thing disappears. So the mushrooms go all over the ground. And but yes. Yeah. Uh, and the orb does Can not coalesce and go into clay. No. Interesting. Um, after Pantheo, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Anything else you want to do, Pantheo? Um, Pantheo has. I guess a bonus action still. I'll come up on Dork's dude and give him an offhand. You know what? When we talked, I wasn't sure how I was going to go out, but I'm kind of into how, how you did this. Ain't no, ain't no way. Up. Thank you. Ain't no way that's a four. Four plus four is eight. Yes, it is. That ain't going to hit. Mm-mm, I'm sorry. But Wait. Dark appreciates oh. the additional flanking. Dark, it's your turn. Yeah, I was going to say... I'm going to flank with my spiritual weapon again. I was going to say he... Wouldn't he technically have gotten advantage on that? Yes. If you want to roll again, you can. Oh, that would have hit. Yeah, it would. Go ahead and roll your damage, both of you. Two points. Yeah. Um, first, uh, my attack with my spiritual weapon is a 22. Definitely hits. For six points of force damage. 
Amazing. We're gonna go ahead and roll for this one. It needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Four. Oh, that rumbled my tumble. Takes another point of damage. Anything else, sir? No. Thank you for your turn, Dorit. It's Lumiere's turn. He. 50. 20. 25. 30 comes in and he's gonna slash at it. Uh, roll advantage, sir. 2d20s. Jeez, what is this? Casting college? Hmm. 2d20. Oh, my bad. Yeah. That's a dog, sir. I'm sorry. And one of the utensils is a weapon. And Clay's having no part of it. <laughs> Two D20s. Um, well, the Koi did not help, but that before that thing flipped over, it was a 17, so that would be a 2 mm-hmm. to hit. The other one would have only been a 10. So, uh, so 42? Yep, 40. 40, 40, 46. 46. Yep, yep. Uh, let's see here. Okay, we got some numbers. We got... Um... 19 points. Streaking. 19! Ah, oh, that is enough! Lumiere is able to slice to this one in a puff of fire that actually doesn't have a red hue to it here in the Shadowfell. And doesn't give off heat. Mm-hmm. The final dog disappears. Sorry, Boromir. Born. 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 Boromir. Born. Born. Bo- Boromir? What's the haste? We're taking the hobbits to other They've taken the hobbits to Isengard. To Isengard. To Isengard. To Isengard. They've taken the hobbits to Isengard. To Isengard. God. 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 Okay. Sorry. Sorry. That was fun though. I, you know what? I no, I'm noticing that I missed so many freaking memes. I missed out on so many memes and so many it like fun. like wow. references and stuff because I never saw them. What, what are memes? Oh yeah, good point. I am. I'm only listening to Tic Tacs now. What are Tic Tacs? Uh, so. That's like, those are uh, things that I think you play uh, when no. you throw up no, the ball and try to pick them up. We're making in, in-world in jokes <laughs> about what you're saying mm-hmm. that we don't have. Uh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Um, so, also, is, is just out of curiosity, are we making this happen because, we, because we're in the Shadowfell and it's like a different area, or it's just... Making what happen. Don't worry about it. We'll we'll have it happen again. Okay, all right. Oh. So, so um, all right, yeah. it's oddly quiet without the snarling and the growling of the dogs. Yeah. It actually makes you miss their sound. H- however, um, because Lumiere saw it, I'm gonna. It, did, would he have any information on what just happened? No. You guys can roll Arcana if you'd like. Yeah, I also saw it. I'd love to. Let me see your hands, dude. Mm. Don't touch me, just in case. 23. Um, so there oh! are... Oh! No, don't! <laughs> Bring it in! I need a closer look. There are magics where people take in the life force of those they're fighting. You've heard of warlocks doing it. Um, other worse necromancers. Necromancers aren't very good. Yeah. In ethical, moral stature. Um... So it's possible he has some kind of monk ability that lets him steal the vitality of another creature. Interesting. Um. Hey, bud. Hmm. You got some necromatic hands. Mm-hmm. I think when you finish off um something with life force, you kind of suck it up. Oh my god. Wait. Oh no, does that mean I can't knock somebody out and it's non-lethal damage now? You're gonna have to find out, I guess. Lumiere nods at you and says, you just have to control the power that you have, like I did. If you can learn to do it on command, you can learn to do it when not commanded. Show me your ways, Lulu. Help me I ma- might not be able to help you. You might help, need to find a monastery. Help me mediate and learn the ways of the world. Sounds like you're trying to become a druid. Even when you guys talk, you know how we all kind of have notes in our speech? Uh-huh. It's almost like the music of your speech is gone. It's monotone. almost monotone. Yeah. I'm going to go check out the mausoleum. 
Dork sounds exactly the same. <laughs> Why? Is it because there? <laughs> Dork doesn't he emote that much. Oh. <laughs> That's so fucking funny, Josh. <laughs> Dork's voice sounds strangely similar. <laughs> There is a... This mausoleum is creepy. So then is clay the same way? Yes. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this place. Why are Let's you guys walking me? Get Here's the <laughs> Damn it, Josh. Why are we what are you? <laughs> Why are you mocking me? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh you're going to give me a split in my side? <laughs> You guys are on the exterior of the Harn Mausoleum, and it does actually say Harn Mausoleum in common, but it's distorted in a way like a metal band logo. Ah, it's hard to read. Mausoleum! <laughs> oh, no. Mausoleum! There but, but are other time, buildings, but they're completely know. caved in. There's every time no way you, to get in them. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, every time you open a door, it's just screamo. <sighs> wow! Um, um, oh, oh! The mausoleum oh, oh. that they referenced is the one to the north. Yeah, that's the way I'm trekking. Okay. They referenced the mausoleum to the north. We should check there first. <laughs> that is acceptable. You I guys agree. head up to it. Do you, um, it has wrought iron gates that are closed. In front I, of it. I just opened them. I don't You're vibe locked. with this place. It's really creepy. Um, not, not the chill. The you tried to pick lock. Yeah, let me extend my claw and pick it like last time. Mm -hmm. I don't know why the cadence of my voice also changed. It's hard to, yeah. Yeah, trying to do like the nonchalant Pantheo voice with a monotonous <laughs> not doing the cadence. That's weird. I can see that's where I'm a little bit like, oh, your job is a little easier. Like, for me with Clay, because it's just Southern, but in a monotone mm -hmm. voice. And Theo is still chill, but sometimes the chill comes from inflection. And then Let me pick this one. Clay almost sounds like tree trunks. <clears throat> this fucker, this guy is hot tonight. Yeah, uh, that's a 24. <laughs> yeah, you're able to... Oh, sorry, not 24, it's just a 22. You are able to pick the lock. Um, it was a well-conditioned lock, probably, um, kept in, kept in use by the Scarlet Sash. We could have gotten the key from the Scarlet Sash, probably. Maybe, unless they destroyed it. That uh, would make sense, to prevent the evil from getting out. <laughs> However, Clay here has a can of WD-40. <laughs> this very dark mausoleum actually has a little He's bit of color in the tiles. Yes, I can. Yeah. They are red, like the color of dried blood, like a mm. muted blackish red. Mm. This is the most color I've seen here yet. <laughs> All over this main room are bones. Love um, the bones. And through the iron gates to the west, north, and east, there are sarcophagi. Hmm, interesting. Um, this is sketchy. Uh, can I investigate to see traps? Because since it was locked and they didn't watch stuff. Okay. Investigatory. And that's gonna be awful. That is an eight. Um, you I look around that. and it doesn't look like any of the tiles have like weight systems on them. You don't see any trip wires or strings. I see a lot of guitar strings though. Uh, she showed me a TikTok where it was um, like somebody or the rogue saying, "Hey, watch it. There's a lot of trip wires." And the fighter went, "Sounds good, everybody. There's a lot of trip wires." And then the bard is just like, "Hey, yeah, they're I just there's just I found this string. Yeah, I found this loot string. They just got loot strings everywhere, man. You just have to grab them off the floor." And there was trip wires. Um. Before you guys go in, very clearly staring right at where you're standing are two huge stone gargoyles. Hmm, this seems a little odd. I don't trust those. I don't do Not either. chill. No. 
I would like to investigate the bones. I'm just going to say they have a dry sense of humor. I'm going to look around the bones. I'm going to just stare at the gargoyles. Uh, what are you looking at with the gargoyles? I'm just staring no, at them. No, deal. Um, what? I'm just looking at the bones. Okay, you walk in? Yeah, I walk in and just peer around the bones. Um, as you go to walk in, you hear footsteps on the roof of the mausoleum. Someone is here. And the, those of you outside of it see... I can't pull it on. Mm-hmm. Put me to sleep. See what looks like a, a pretty put together zombie in armor. Walk to the edge of the roof and sit on it casually with its legs dangling over the doorway. Too high for you to reach. But it looks down at you and whistles a low whistle across the shadow fell. You guys hear rummaging of gravel and dirt from the graves behind you. As you turn and look, as 12 gray leathery heads pop out of open graves. We have made a lot of friends. Clay goes up to one of the graves and takes the head and just like shoves it back into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can either fight all 12 ghouls and the white on the roof, plus the moving gargoyle. Or you can run in, grab the eggs, and get the fuck out of here. What is the plan? Lumiere, thoughts? <laughs> uh, uh, this is too much. We can take a couple of them. I can guard the exit. You guys want to hurry up? I'll guard the exit. Um, I can try to keep the zombies busy. If, uh, actually, I'm pretty fucking fast. I could probably be in and out. I also... Um, I already said I was going in. I'm going to go grab the eggs. And I burst into the room. Yeah. You go in, and as you step in, the bones float. They reassemble into three warhorse skeletons. Fucking A, what? This takes time. You, already planning on what you're going to do, run to the first sarcophagus to the left and push it open. Um, what you find... You find a very, very special saddle. It looks like it's covered in gems and still in good condition. Um, the horses are actually not coming after you. What's the fucking puzzle in here? So, um, if you want to go to a different sarcophagus, you can. I was gonna, s- I was gonna say, as Pantheo was quick running in there, they went to one. Could just you could say no because it's like, oh, that wasn't stated before. But as he was going to the first one, could I have been going to the one on the opposite side of the room mm-hmm. at the same time and push it open? Just to try to hurry up and get out. You are finding a pile of jewelry. Rings that are broken, decayed, rusted. um, Pendants that are cracked and destroyed. Just rubble in general that used to be stone jewelry. um, And clothes that are shredded and decayed. So definitely not this one. Um, meanwhile, Lumiere has run to the to the grave that you guys will use for the portal. I quick, like, and took a handful of jewelry. In the book. It crumbles. Okay, it's never mind. It's literally just worthless. Never mind. We shouldn't also bring anything else that'll make the scar sash mad. Oh, that's very true. So then they go, oh, as he runs to the portal, the ghouls do start to go after him. But once he's about 30 feet from the portal, they stop and turn back to all of you and walk towards the mausoleum. Oh, fucking awesome. Uh, I'm going to turn around and drop him. Doric, what are you going to do? I'm going to wait here at the entrance. Oh, to make sure you guys have a clear path out? Yeah. I'm going to drop a moonbeam right in front of Doric. Mm-hmm. So, phew, shoot that out there. As dull as it is, it still is moonlight, so... Um, can I see the guy? Mm-hmm. Gonna... It's like above your head. And he's obviously... He's just chilling. He's got one leg out. And I know that this guy's a, a white. Um, you know he's some kind of undead. Mm. And, um, if you want to roll for me, religion or arcana, I can kind of give you more. Can I do a religion? Um, 
long, that's a four. Okay. Um, you know it's much more than a regular zombie. Mm-hmm. It's pretty strong. And not only are numbers on his side, but his intelligence and strength is on his side. Okay. Um, I'm going to cast a Guiding Bolt at him. Okay. What do I do? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> nothing. You win nothing. Oh, that's going to miss. 12 to hit. Oh, um, I'm pretty sure it does with his armor on. Yeah, it does miss. He has studded leather on. <coughs> All right. Um, next round, uh, Pantheo. He's going to go to the third, um, just trying to find his eggs. All right, you push over the third one in the back. Uh, Clay is not far behind you. Mm-hmm. And in it are several different locked chests wrapped in, um, like, seals, like fabric seals. Oh, fuck. We don't know which one it's in. Um, you know that this book is several hundred years old, so you're looking for an old one. Yeah. Um, and this, uh, the one you're looking for probably isn't locked because these weren't necessarily dangerous and they wanted them to decay in the shadow fell. Okay. So you start just opening boxes. And again, it's decayed weird stuff. Um, is it okay if I say Clay comes over and helps you? With both of you guys opening chests, you do find one that has a bunch of little round, like they look like moons because they're covered in little craters. They're like round but with tons of dimples, like a really ugly, desiccated uh, golf ball. Okay. Um, and of different colors, different lumpy shapes and sizes, but completely, oh like, dusty and weird. So you guys are like, and oh, and there's a book in with it. And a map. Um, you guys start looking around and you see details of, um, in the book, about mining um, what are called philosopher's eggs. You guys page through it, and you're like, oh, eggs, uh, yeah, mm-hmm, uh-huh, and you, okay, is that okay? Yeah. So you guys find the eggs, you're running out, there's a moonbeam, Doric is trying to keep the ghouls occupied. Oh, play jumps on one of the war horses. It just shatters. Okay, never mind. You guys didn't take the saddle, so they do not attack you. How far mm. away are they all from me at this point? I mean the ghouls. Oh. Not them. 15 feet. All of them? No, like four of them. And the white is like 20 feet up? Yeah, but after you attack, you stood up and walked off to the other side. Okay. Okay. The mayor's like, come on, let's go! Yeah, we have the chest and we bolt out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I move the moonbeam in front of us as we're like going. Oh, out. nice, making a path. Dark, you see them pass you and run by you. What are you doing? I run with them and as soon as I can get as many of these ghouls within 30 feet radius of me. They'll only ever be four at a time. That's what the book says. Interesting. Oh. It's a waves of four. Hmm. Oh, we probably could have taken. Yeah, if it's 10, if only 12. But it's the white that's the problem. But it's still three waves of ghouls, plus the white and two garbo. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I'm just running. Oh, I shut the door <laughs> to the mausoleum. Mm. It locks in place automatically. You guys shut the door, you run. Um, Lumiere sees you, he goes, am I good? And you're good. And he jumps in, covers himself, hops out. Just, we're running, we're just like, go. <laughs> um, anyone gonna do a, a jumping collapse into it? That would be funny. No. Um, no. That's okay. Panthea's not gonna jump up the chest. No, and Clay got freaked out because he has these weird things like, with him now. However, I think Clay would face plant. Good going. Clay face plants in. Clay, you feel me here grab your shirt and pull you out. Uh, Pantheo gets right in with the chest on his chest and then um, Pops crosses in. in, yeah. Amazing. And Dora? All the ghouls have stopped chasing you now that you're within 30 feet of the portal. I'm just going to look back see if I can see the white. But the gargoyles are looking at you. They're no longer looking at the place where the door is. Finally, now. 
all of you return to Chalet Brentifax. What was only half hour, not even 15 mm. minutes. Mm. You see the sun going down. You return and um, you hear a <laughs> This oh. Admiral runs over to you. He was outside for his late night potty. He runs over to you and he starts pulling at your clothes to get inside before the sun goes down. Yeah, I'll follow him. When I get inside, I just spend ten minutes like scratching him as I uh, ritual cast speak with animals. When the sun your goes hunger down. returns to you. You realize you've gone a whole day without eating or drinking. Because time passed much differently. Holy oh, shit, I'm really hungry now. That's why I was like... Oh my god, I can emote again. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> Finally! Clay just keeps looking at his hands. Uh, once once the um, ritual is up, um, hey, how long how long were we in there? Uh, to the dock? Yeah. All day. Just all day? Yeah, I've been waiting for you to come home. Okay, no nights or anything went by? Mm-mm. That's good, that's good. The ravens let me out potty in the middle of the day and fed me beans. Sick, dude. Oh. I don't want to sleep with him tonight. <laughs> Beans and rice. Oops. Um, uh, Clay's not going to pet Admiral. Ad- roll an acrobatics check. He's going to try to push into your hands anyway. No, mm no. I'll use my hip or something, but not my hands. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, wait, why did I roll two of them? Um, uh, tw- uh, 22. Yeah, you're able to keep your hands away from him. Oh, wait, hold on. He just wags is, against your legs. Acrobatics is dex, not athletics. Okay, so that would only be a total 20. No problem. So, you guys have returned. You have your eggs. Do you look in the box and read the book? Clay's just doing this. <laughs> like a doctor. I hand the box to Dory. Hi. dear. Fucking dear. <laughs> I forgot about that. I'm so sorry. I forgot about that fucking deer. <laughs> so it was what? a it was a wall mount and the like it was a hunting the deer trophy. Head. Yeah, and they, and they, they mounted did. his head. <laughs> I have seen it. And it's the, they had the feet like this on the mount. <laughs> you come into my house. You come into my house. <laughs> you mount my family. <laughs> he mounts so, my head on a wall. Yeah. It was, I'm so sorry. Oh, I freaking died so hard. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Um, but no, Clay is just like... This is... I... We finally got the... The woman rocks. <laughs> Let me finally! You. Because that is not what they are. What the fuck is wrong with you? Whoa, man. That was uncool for... We spent a lot of time getting these women rocks. Next time I can cut open a body, I'll show you what they are. Jesus Christ. That is oh. kind of morbid. Well, that's how you learn. How would you ever perform surgery? Me? I know. No, he's magic. Sometimes magic can't get rocks out of something's stomach. Oh, maybe Kauri will let us. Anyway. So, what do you have there? Did you find the eggs? I believe so. Can I see them? Why? I just want to roll nature. Sure. So he rolled, he, he's taking a look and he's like, so they're definitely not any creature eggs. There's rocks. How many are there? Oh god. I'll roll for it. 31? Holy fuck. I think this is something that we probably shouldn't tell people about. They are... Gray. They did not get any color back when you bought them here. Most of them are cracked in half pieces of them have like chunked off they're not solid anymore um have you ever done like a science experiment in school where you like put like you make pyrite have you guys ever done that um you kind of get this ugly chunk of weird fluffy charcoal and that's kind of what these look like they just look like you took a bunch of chemicals together added heat added cold added a reagent and they just and now it's its own little like chemical makeup. Okay. Um, you also have a book, Doric. 
about someone who had one of these eggs. It was trying to guess the chemical makeup. It was trying to recreate the chemical makeup just by looking at it. So now you have one as well, but yours doesn't work. You have 31 of them, but they don't work. I cast mending on them. They'll be fine. <laughs> I'll cast mending, it'll be fine. <laughs> totally great. <laughs> like new. One of totally them. good, very much, yes. <laughs> Look at this, this is certifiably used. One of the broken parts very good for you. uses back are these, on. But are these always here? Yeah. Okay. For a while. So, oh, the, the book. Alcohol. The book that you guys paged there really quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Could we have read the journal last night? Yes. Mm. I made that cold, though. The Journal so of the Baroness. You learned that Baron Brantifax was an avid hunter and often invited guests to the chalet to hunt with him. The Baroness admired his generous nature and his vigor. The Baron loved his trusty Mastiff, Rorn, as much as he did his wife and children. The Baroness disliked it when Baron fed the hound scraps from the dining table. The Baroness felt too isolated at the chalet. She much preferred the trappings of civilization and city life. Sylphine, the couple's firstborn daughter, was bedridden, having been born with terrible physical deformities. The Baroness was glad that Sylphine could be housed in the chalet to keep her far from the public's eye. A nursemaid was hired to watch over the child while the Baroness was away. The Baroness described Sylphine's death at the age of six as merciful, and there's some indication that the Baroness had a hand in it. How oh, fun. Heluth, the young daughter of the Baron and Baroness, was a tomboy, more like her father than her mother. Heluth was slain on her ninth birthday, killed by a wolf while out hunting with her father. The Baroness doesn't blame her husband for Heluth's death, but neither does she absolve him of his guilt. Both daughters were buried in the chalet's graveyard at the Baron's insistence. In the Baroness's final journal entry, she speaks of evil whispers in the graveyard and makes plans to leave the chalet brand effects, vowing never to return. Um, how she continues on the line, it's either she had another husband and had more children, or she raised her nephews and nieces, or maybe there was a son that was never written about. There, she, there's nothing. She went and did that and kept the brand to back name. Well, it's very possible that she was the, the he married in. It's very possible that she was the brand effects and the Baron hmm. married in. If that makes sense. And then just kept the brand effects name. Right when you when you have a very very. Oh, and it makes sense because I wouldn't know this. When you're from a really significant, noble home, it doesn't matter what gender you are. Mm. Whoever marries in takes the name. And that actually still does happen today. Mm. Just not. Okay. Like mm. Rockefeller. Yeah. Or Kennedy. Or whatever. Right. So, um, you take on the name of the more prominent family. Mm. Just having the name gives you advantage in society. Yeah. So, that is everything you read in her journal. Just general, like, those are obviously summaries. Does anyone want to look at the book in the box before you go to sleep tonight? Yes. You take a look at this book. It is bound in black leather. Very similar to the other journal. But this one actually has, embossed on the, th on the spine, a deep and creeping darkness. It shows minimal signs of wear and tear, other than a few pages creased through carelessness and a spot here or there. The work is neat, though not flawless, containing notable spelling errors and ink blotches. Um, when you actually take a look and start reading it, it tells a tale of a mountain village whose residents went missing over the course of several months. The book presents a series of vignettes allegedly collected from those who were there. Survivors, traveling merchants, and secondhand accounts residents of nearby settlements. It is unclear whether it is fictional tale, folklore, or history. The content seems factual, but the language is extravagantly dramatic. Hmm. Interesting. Um, the town, Vermilion, 
Established after settlers discovered a platinum vein in the mountainside. Did a booming business in both the raw ore and the refined metal for around a decade. Due to the rough terrain and the harshness of the climate, the village never grew large. It intermittently hosted a succession of traveling merchants who came to the village from Placemir for about a week or two. They sold and traded their wares and then left to return to Placemir, where the road actually went through. Wait, I'm confused. Vermilion is near Placemir. Vermilion is the mining town that disappeared. The nearest civilization settlement was three days' ride on horseback down the mountainside. The inhabitants named in the book included the Mayor Le Duvisin, a kind and talented dwarf smith named Tormen, and his wife Blennis. These are names you have heard before. Me? Mm -hmm. okay. You've heard the dwarf names. Seventy years ago, an explosion rocked the platinum mine, collapsing the tunnels and burying workers under tons of rubble. And taking a look at how clean this book is, it was added to the chest of eggs much later. Mm. Um, 60 miners were underground that day, and over 30 of them died in the initial collapse, and the instability of the tunnels made the rescue of the others slow and dangerous. The miners who survived the collapse were trapped for days or weeks before they were rescued, or perished in the deep, alone and afraid. 16 came out alive, 11 were never found. In the wake of the catastrophe, another horror plagued the village as the people began to disappear, starting with the survivors, not all at once. However, one or two would vanish in a single night. Then a ten day might pass before the next disappearance. The plant life wasn't doing well and the animals were not thriving. People were ill and there were general tremors in the ground. These unexplained disappearances terrified the remaining miners. After all, the survivors either disappeared or fled and other villagers began to vanish. The villagers tried to protect themselves by sleeping with weapons and taking ships on watch, but nothing changed. Traveling in groups didn't help, since a companion might vanish while even briefly out of sight. With no one willing to keep the mine open and the disappearances leading to fears that Vermilion might be cursed, merchants and other travelers stopped visiting the village about 65 years ago. The end of the Patrick story claims that the village is still there, though whether anyone inhabits it is a mystery. The volume's writer muses over the decline of the village, speculating about the fate of its inhabitants. They wonder whether it would be worth hiring adventurers to see if anything remains of the village, particularly the platinum ore. Sketched on the back of the last page is a rough map of the village's location, with directions from the closest mountain town called Placemir. Huh. Um, <clears throat> because this was a platinum mine that was highly sought after, and it was stored with the eggs, and you know the eggs came from a mine, it's possible that either the ingredients for the eggs are found in that mine or platinum is a final ingredient needed for the eggs. One of those two things could be surmised. So Doric read a lot of that out loud if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and it perked up a bunch of your ears. Placement, that sounds like my town. It sounds an awful lot like my town. What do you want? Why are you talking to me? Well, I just thought, uh, you know, you're just saying it. I'm just saying it. Okay. I'm sure it's not the same one, but... Um, yeah, Theo fell asleep while he was reading it, so. <laughs> Nothing to do with the plague, so I don't fuck this. Yes. Okay. Well, it's just like, man, this is really calming. Hmm. Well, looks like we're going to be going towards my town. Is that what do you want? And Lumiere has been listening to it's a book. Do you want to go register it with Candlekeep first? Candlekeep is closer than your home, I think. I figured we would stop on the back at Candlekeep to finish off this quest anyway. Mm -hmm. Plus, we have to get the shell. We <coughs> cannot forget it. Yes. Well, let's sleep tonight and head out back to Gang tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Sounds good to me. All right, so uh, on the calendar, mark off another day for me, please. Do you guys in the morning say goodbye to the Crimson or Scarlet Sash? Wave them I, on. I'm going to go talk to them about the things that my hands did. Okay. Okay, we'll end then. Um, we'll end there. 
And um, when they do find out that you guys have the box, they're fine with it. The mm -hmm. eggs are completely desiccated. There's nothing that can be done with them anyway. Yeah, they're happy about the situation, mm -hmm. probably. Right, so they're like, absolutely, take it. That's fine. Um, they're happy to hear that the white is still protecting the mausoleum. I was going, I was curious if that was like a defense thing that they had in place. They did not. But they're just taking advantage of it. Right. So we can talk about that more when we get back. Okay. Perfect. Thank you everyone, um, for completing the chalet brand effects. We are going to wrap it up with the conclusion and head back to Candlekeep. Ooh. So we'll see you next time on Downstairs and Dragons. Have fun with D&D.